Welcome to repairing a Southworth 12 inch steam pump. This is part 5, making and fitting a gasket to the water chest and repacking the steam and water cylinder glands, followed by refitting the steam cylinder and piston. This lump of cast gun metal has nothing to do with this episode. It arrived from Blackgate's engineering the other day and it's the material to make a pair of slide valves. The gasket compound on the water cylinder, thanks to the ultrasonic cleaner and the solvent, is now very easy to remove. I started off with a scriber, but that was fragmenting it too much. Instead, I used a sharp Stanley knife blade, and I got rid of every trace of it. Yes, one or two particles fell into the holes, but I blew them away with an airline. There's still a bit of silicone rubber to remove, and here I'm scraping off some of this gasket compound that's down the hole. It's time now to make a gasket. I'm going to use an ink pad to take an impression of the part I need the gasket for. And I'm making sure I get a good coating of the ink on the part. All I then have to do is press it firmly down to a piece of gasket material. But even though it was well coated, the image is less than spectacular. Probably because my bench is uneven, I should have done it on a surface plate. Although it's very easy to put right, I wiped off the ink, repeated the process, placed the part back on the gasket paper and tapped it with a hide-faced hammer. And now on the gasket paper, as you can see, I have a perfect image to work with. And the first thing to do is to punch out the holes using a hole punch. When you use the ink pad method, especially my ink pad, which is a little bit over full of ink, the ink transferred to the gasket material doesn't really dry. Not for a long time anyway, so you have to be very careful that you don't smudge it with your fingers. This is what it looked like after I'd punched out all of the holes. There's nothing wrong with the hole on the left hand side. What you can see is the punching that fell out of the punch, and it's just sat on the ink on the gasket. The next job to do is to cut out the centre part. I used a sharp Stanley knife blade for this, but when I got to the round parts, I just made lots of little stabbing movements. This removes the centre part without stressing it out too much. Before removing the ink, it's quite important to cut out the gasket. This job doesn't have to be accurate, because you can trim it to size once it's fitted. After cutting out the gasket, using a cloth, I wiped away all of the surplus ink. Then I trimmed the curved parts on the inside, using a drum sander in my bench-mounted Proxon motor tool. This bench-mounted Proxon motor tool is always at my left-hand side when I'm sitting at my workbench. Very useful. And in no time at all, the gasket is looking quite good. I've just noticed on the studs that there is still a tiny bit of silicone rubber left. I will remove that before I fit the gasket permanently. But for now, I'm going to show how I fitted the gasket. First of all, I carefully pressed it onto the studs. Then I removed the tiny piece of silicone rubber from one of the studs and fitted the lid in place. And as I slid the lid down into position, it took the gasket with it. I decided to use brass nuts. These are 5BA brass nuts. The original ones were steel and had washers. And the studs are really not that long. I prefer it this way. Building one of these pumps is not easy. And I can feel that as the builder got further and further on with the job, he was getting a bit fed up unless one person started the job and someone else finished it. In a previous episode, when I was testing the pump using compressed air, I noticed a water leak from the gland, so I think it's a good idea to change the gland. If you look carefully at this image, you can see as I move the piston, the piston rod is moving from side to side. The original gland is worn and not sealing very well. Apologies for the blurry camera work, I forgot to adjust the focus, but as you can see, I've removed the original black Viton O-ring and replaced it with a silicone O-ring. And also because on a lot of Southworth pumps, the glands leak even with a new O-ring fitted, I've fitted an extra one. And here I'm doing exactly the same on the underside of the steam cylinder. Before fitting it all together, I oiled it, and I also fitted a second O-ring and here I'm tightening the gland cover. I'm not over tightening it, I'm using the second o-ring to press down on the first one. With this arrangement it's very important not to over tighten the gland nuts. In this clip I'm refitting the steam cylinder to the two columns. There is some inaccuracy in the length of the columns where they support the cylinder, 
and there is a thin washer fitted underneath the cylinder casting on one of the columns. In this clip I'm thoroughly oiling the cylinder and the piston because very shortly the piston is going to be refitted to the rod and permanently installed in the pump. When I tried the piston in place once I'd mounted the cylinder to the top of the columns it wasn't a good fit, it was very tight. Maybe it would be a good idea to put the packing washer under the other side. So I removed the cylinder, swapped the packing washer over and here we are now fitting the piston with the cylinder more in line with the columns. I didn't use a piston ring compressor, I used the side of a spanner. There's a bit of a knack in doing this but once you get used to it it's very easy to do. It's a combination of putting downward pressure on the piston to hold the ring in position and by doing this gently, slowly and carefully the piston ring eventually fits in the cylinder. Now it's not tight, it's just a good fit. And I confirmed this by moving the piston up and down in the cylinder and it felt very good. Once again now the pump is top heavy, it's very important to make sure it doesn't fall over and drop on the floor. I've temporarily refixed it to a wooden board to allow me to work on it safely. Once I fit the slide valves that I haven't made yet and refit the steam chest and the steam chest cover, it's going to be very top heavy. So temporarily fixing the pump to a piece of wood is a good idea. And that is it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.